day everyone from the land down under. My name is Andy and welcome to another video of Unplugged EV. In today's video I would like to bust a myth about the B setting in the Outlander PHEV. There is information out there on the internet, rumors, that higher B settings are using more energy while driving. I know, I know, this is totally insane. So to educate everyone and to prove this is not true, I will make this test today. So what we are going to do today, I'm driving down this road here just in ahead of us, which is about one and a half kilometers down to the highway. It is fairly flat. It is maybe a tiny, 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 tiny bit downhill. To the highway but this is totally fine this makes no difference to our test we do the test in both directions maybe two or three or four times i will prove to you that different b settings don't use any more or less energy in the outlander phev that is a total myth and i have to bust i'm the myth buster so to speak so I've read this a couple of times on different forums and on I think on Facebook as well that people were saying I'm always driving in B0 because it uses less energy. Have you never experienced when you put the car from B0 to B5 it starts braking and then you need to push the accelerator even harder to overcome this brake force. This is most and this is mostly people coming from a vehicle with combustion engine because in this case it might be true it looks like the car is braking and you need to push the accelerator harder so you need to give more gas to keep your speed but with the electric system it's totally different okay so first of all we have to talk about this meter here which is called the power meter in the Outlander PHEV. You can also see the B settings later on in the dashboard, which will appear over here somewhere. And then we've got the shifter here as well. So you can shift very quickly from neutral to B3 and with a second shift to B5. I will also use the pedals on the steering wheel to go up and down. I will also record the PHEV watchdog on my mobile phone only using this screen here which gives us the motor this one gives us the kilowatt of the motors so this is the main thing we want to focus on and before i start with this whole experiment we have to we all have to agree to something okay let's start the car and you will see the pointer goes in the horizontal position between the green between the green power area and the blue region area. Okay, so can we can we agree that the higher the pointer goes, the more energy the car uses. And the lower the pointer or the needle goes, the less energy we are using. This should be very very clear and is a basic understanding for this experiment. Okay, so if we all agree on this, let's get started. Should turn on all the cameras now. GoPro recording. Everything is recording. And because I'm doing this test on low speed so you can see the effect better, we have to watch the traffic a little bit and make sure we are not holding anyone up. There shouldn't be too much traffic on this road this morning, but um, you never know. Right. Is this riddling? Okay, nobody's coming. Okay, so I'm driving sixty kilometers an hour. go and I'm keeping my foot on the accelerator I'm not moving my foot at all just trying to get 60 right here okay 
Okay, so we're doing 58 as part of the PHEV watchdog. And we're using 6 kilowatt at the moment to drive the car. We're driving in B0. If I pull back the shifter once to B3, see the pointer goes down and the car starts braking with minus 3 kilowatt on B3 setting. If I do it again on B5, it goes even further down. I'm not moving my foot on the accelerator. It's still in the same position. Of course, the car brakes. And this is exactly what people are experiencing and thinking when you push the accelerator back or the shifter back, the car brakes. And then you need to push the accelerator even more, like I'm doing now. So I need to go further down with the accelerator to get my 60 kilometers back to overcome the brake power of the car. And this is what people experiencing and that's why they think B5 brakes. not going on the highway today just turning around here okay so just to recap this for a moment I was driving with my foot on the accelerator in the same position on B0 and then push the shifter back to B3 and B5 and the car slowed down of course and people think this is a brake force which they need to overcome by pushing the accelerator further so you need more power to drive your 60 kilometers which I, I do understand where they are coming from when you drive a gas a combustion engine car and you you push the accelerator further, you're using more gas. You're using more petrol, you're using more energy. They are absolutely right what they experience. They're stepping on the gas and they think they're using more energy to propel the car. Totally understandable. But this is where the problem actually starts. What the B settings actually do they are braking the car of course but what they actually do is they are remapping your zero point of the accelerator of the gas pedal so to speak you are putting the neutral point of your power meter basically your zero point is not any longer between the green and the blue area when you go in b5 it will be in the blue area and that's exactly what we just experienced. We were driving in the green area and I shifted from B0 to B5 and the pointer or the needle went down into the blue area without me moving my foot off on the accelerator at all. And this is the remapping which happens from B0 to B5, which you can adjust accordingly to your driving needs, to the conditions, to the driving environment. So for the driver it looks like the car is braking and you need more gas to keep it going. But as we have already seen on the PHEV watchdog and on the power meter as well, the pointer or the needle goes actually down. It goes from the green area into the neutral and even into the blue and breaks the car. And as we have agreed at the beginning of this video, the further down the needle goes, the less energy we are using and you could see this on the PHEV watchdog as well we were driving with was it six kilowatt on 60 kilometers an hour and then I pushed it to B3 and it went down to minus three kilowatt so you're using less energy you're not using more energy and if you push your accelerator further down again to compensate against this it goes back up to six kilowatt and you're using exactly the same amount of energy again just with a further press of the accelerator 
and I'll show you this when we go back now. If you have watched the pointer of the power meter, you have realized when we're driving on B0, it has a certain position on the power meter. And when I put it back in B5 and have to compensate against the remapping of the accelerator, it goes back into the same position as before. And the power meter is your instrument in the car, which shows you the actual power usage of the car, of the electric drivetrain. If you don't have the dog, which gives you a number, watch the power meter and you will see you will use the same position of the pointer regardless what B settings you are in. And I'll show you this when we go back now. Okay. I hope there's no car coming yet for the next test. Because I won't drive that fast. All right. So everything is still recording. There's no car behind us. We are going back to 60 kilometers about. And there we go. Which is about 56, 58 kilometers on the PHEV watchdog. All right, let's try this speed. We've, we are using five kilowatt, as you can see on the PHEV watchdog. And I'm shifting down from B0 or from, hang on, B0. Let's do B0 first. And I'm shifting down, so I'm using seven kilowatt to maintain the 58, 59 kilometers per hour. Shifting down to B3 now. And you can see the pointer goes almost down to neutral. And I have to push the accelerator a little bit further to compensate, to keep my 60 kilometers an hour. Okay, I'm driving 60 again on B3. And you can see I'm using the six, seven kilowatt again to maintain the speed. If I go to B5, I have to push further to keep my speed, but I'm still using the same kilowatt as before. And if you compare the, let me just turn around here. Okay, let's do this test again one more time. Just driving on the other side now. coming 60 okay so if you want to watch the position of the pointer and the kilowatt we are using and now I'm going f oh hang on I need to go in B0 first I need to keep my lane <laughs> there we go 58 kilometers per hour going into B3 goes into zero and I need to push my gas further to keep my speed but the needle the pointer goes in the same position as before so we are using exactly the same amount of energy I'm going to be five and you can see the kilowatt goes down and I need to push the accelerate further to keep my 60 kilometers an hour that's exactly the same amount of energy we are using all the time when we are driving 60 kilometers an hour. Of course, if I go back into B0 now and let the car coast, so take my foot off the accelerator, I'm using less energy. In fact, I'm not using any energy at all at the moment. But that's a totally different story. Okay, and let's do a last test to make this really clear. What I'm going to do now is I put the car in cruise control at about 60 kilometers of speed again. 
and then we shift back from B, B2 from drive to B5 and watch the kilowatt hours we are using and also the power meter and you will see there's no change. In cruise control the car does all of this automatically. It automatically compensates against this remapping of the gas pedal. It's not like you're driving in cruise control on in D drive which is B2 and you're using less energy than in B5. It does not make any difference at all at any speed but it's it's more it's more obvious when you drive slower that's why i make this test at 60 kilometers of speed and not at 100 highway speed okay let's do this final test all right and off we go again control turning on cruise control and we've got the power meter in position we're using 5 kilowatt and I'm shifting down to B3 now you watch the power meter you watch the kilowatt hours on the dog and I'm using B5 now and there's no change we're driving in B5 60 kilometers an hour and there's no change if I go down to B6 again or uh, to B2 no change okay I have to speed up there's a car behind me sorry <laughs> but you have seen there's no change at all regardless what power settings you are using uh, regardless what brake settings you are using there's no change in power usage there's no change in power use no change in anything basically Turning off all my cameras again. Okay guys, I hope this is fairly clear now. Um, oh, stop. Okay guys, so far this testing and the myth busting of saving energy while driving in B0 or B5. As I said, of course you are saving energy when you use B0 and you coast. But while you are driving at a constant speed, if you are driving on cruise control, you're not saving any energy at all, regardless the B settings at all, regardless what brake settings you're in. You're not saving anything. It does not matter. The car uses the same amount of energy. It's just a remapping of your gas pedal. That's all what you compensate for when you push the accelerator further. Okay, guys, so far our experiment. As always, thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Thanks for leaving comments down there. What are your thoughts about this B setting stuff? What is your preferred B setting while you're driving? Are you driving in B0 all the time because you think it saves you energy, which it does? Let me know in the comment down below what your thoughts are about this myths of B setting and saving energy. And this is Andy from Unplug TV Australia signing off. Stay charged. Myth busted. Surprised you even have to ask. It's absolutely busted. No such thing.